Why is Kevin Durant still in the media and news? Hmm. Why is Kevin Durant drive me out of control? I can make a song about this. Why could Kevin Durant just fly away to another team? Let's call it fly away, okay? I don't know, but I, I could tell you this. Kevin Durant was asked to come and talk to ownership uh, a couple of weeks ago, and ownership wanted to kind of clean up the problems that they're having on and off the court with Kevin Durant. And they wanted to see what would keep Kevin Durant in Brooklyn. And Kevin Durant pretty much said, no more Steve Nash and no more Sean Marks. And I don't know what ownership said, but everything that we've read, ownership said, no, no, no. So what does that tell you about Kevin Durant right now? Kevin Durant is demanding things. He believes he is in control of what this team does and what this team should be moving forward. The same Kevin Durant that has done nothing, absolutely zilch, since he's come to the Brooklyn Nets. As a matter of fact, he's been more hurt than healthy. He has taken a four-year, $193 million contract, guaranteed money, and now telling the Nets to trade him. If I was a Brooklyn Nets fan, which I'm not, and I traded away my future for James Harden, who's now with the 76ers, I decided to part ways with Spencer Dinwiddie, Karis LeVert, Allen, one of the best young coaches in the NBA, who's now with the Golden State Warriors, which, by the way, won a championship last year, who decided not to take the Charlotte Hornets job, which only tells me, and it's fitting to me, where he's probably going next year after the Knicks have another losing season. What it tells me, these three idiots, and I mean the three stooges of the NBA, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, and Ben Simmons, are fitting playing on the same team together. Three Dumb, unusual personalities, talented but stupid, who can't get along with coaches, as we know with Ben Simmons with Doc Rivers, Kyrie Irving going all different places, getting so many coaches fired, and Kevin Durant with Oklahoma City had a problems with Billy Donovan at the end. He leaves there. He goes to Golden State. He's had his issues with Steve Kerr. And then goes to the Brooklyn Nets. They decide to part ways with Atkinson. I wonder why. Mm -hmm. And now he doesn't like Steve Nash. Get rid of him. He's horrible. It is fitting why three of these players are playing on the same team and nobody wants them. Nobody wants them and nobody's going to continue to want them at the rate this is going. The longer this drags out, I don't know if any side will get their way at this point. Kevin Durant wanted to, about a month ago, go to either the Miami Heat or the Phoenix Suns. Then there was a rumor that Steph Curry was trying to lure him back to Golden State. How true is that? Who knows? But those three teams, championship caliber teams, Warriors obviously just winning. The other two teams just lost in the NBA Finals in recent years. Now, the most likely cause might be the Celtics, but now we're also hearing the Sixers. And the Celtics might be the last chance for the Nets to get anything viable for Kevin Durant. The 76ers, he didn't want to play with James Harden. He had issues with James Harden in a short stint, allegedly. And the Sixers, outside of Tyrese Maxey, doesn't have a lot to trade to the Nets. So you're really going to dig yourself in a deep hole if that ends up being the case. And is Kevin Durant going to be happy playing with James Harden again? I don't know about that. But that might come to the point where it is for both of them. And Kevin Durant, he might not be happy based on that and might force his way out right away. So who knows at this point what's going to end up happening with where he goes and how long he'll even stay with his next team at this rate. And the Nets, they started out with these unrealistic offers, and now they're going to watch it go down more and more. I think to the point where they're going to have to wait until the trade deadline. I don't think he'll end up getting traded at all. He might end up getting stuck. He won't play. He's going to end up holding out because of that. So have fun with Ben Simmons. And you still got to pay him. Just like Ben Simmons got paid. I was going to say, have fun with Ben Simmons being your second best player that can't shoot. Good luck with that. Second Nets. best player, Kyrie might not be there much longer because right. he. you've heard his contract disputes. He says that he wants to sign his extension and he only wants to play 60 games. He will not play back-to-back -back games. How many players want a max contract? I haven't heard this before in my life. Demanding that he only wants to play 60 games a season and he doesn't want to play back-to-backs. So what are the Nets going to do? Go to the schedule committee and said, nope, all right, we want all our games in perfect pattern so there's no back-to-backs ever. Yeah, good luck. And Kyrie Irving, he is an interesting guy, man. He is a talented guy. If I was the NBA, I would never put him in the Hall of Fame because I like Kyrie. No. He comes from Duke. 
This guy is a selfish man. I love what he said when he did it on Instagram, and I stuck up for him, and I thought he was great. Sticking up for his needs and his thoughts to COVID and not taking the vaccination, wonderful. But did he do it for the right reasons, or he was just trying to prove a point? Because he's in control. Mm. Kyrie is in control. Looking less and less legitimate. Honestly, the guy's a joke. Uncle Drew, whatever you want to call yourself. I call you a fairy tale or something. You're a the joke. Commissioner of the Flat Earth NBA. I, he's a joke. This whole team is a joke. A laughing stock of the NBA. Everybody thought the Knicks were a laughing stock. The Knicks are like gold right now to the NBA. You kidding me? All those ex New York fans cheering for Brooklyn fans, they're going to come right back to the Knicks. Why would fans? <laughs> why would they be cheering for this team? Are you really going to be cheering for Ben Simmons, who didn't want to play last year? Or Kyrie Irving? who didn't want to play last year, and Kevin Durant didn't want to play last year? I've never seen this before. This is a joke. I mean, at least Ben Simmons won't be missing any shots if he doesn't play. Why do you think James Harden wanted to get out of there? Come on. James Harden's looking more and more legitimate than ever before. I don't know if I would go that far. I'm (laughs) telling you. Think about it now. Why did James Harden want to get out of there? Just think about it. It's, it's fair. I'm just saying James Harden's decision-making hasn't even been the greatest. Either. Now oh. Kevin Durant wants to go to the 76ers. I'm sure James Harden's telling the coaching staff and management, you do not want that guy here. <laughs> the 76ers <laughs> might become the Nets if that's the case, too. So I don't know, Philly, if you're going to want to go that's down that That's in Bede's that team. Road. They're not going to bring Kevin Durant in there. It'd be too many personalities there. And Bede's enough of a personality there. To bring a guy as selfish as Kevin Durant there, it wouldn't work. James but, Harden... He's more of a follower. He's not a leader. Kyrie is a leader. Kevin Durant are leaders. These guys are leaders. They'll do whatever you want, and you either follow them or you don't. James Harden was a third option in the playoffs at this point. So imagine if Kevin Durant's there, he'd be like a fifth option at that point. I think James Harden just didn't want to be there anymore. He knew how selfish that team was, and with the players that were there, it was all selfishness, and he didn't want to play for them. And he's happy right there with Doc Rivers. I'm not a big Doc Rivers fan, as everybody knows. It's a joke. It's fitting right now where the Brooklyn Nets are. They thought trading away pieces and Sean Marks was doing all the right things and then made all the wrong moves. And now his foot's out the door, uh, not because of Kevin Durant, just because ownership is just tired of him. But now even more because of Kevin Durant, too. I mean, you're making an ultimatum at this point. Either trade me or fire those guys to make it happen. not going to do that. But it seems like Nets ownership is not siding with the player so in that case uh goodbye kevin durant whenever that does end up happening but goodbye kevin durant on the court if he ends up holding out on the rest of the team it's time for crunch time i was humming there i was (laughs) all right we're gonna start this week with the nfl preseason underway we're gonna start with the most bizarre streak in the NFL right now, the Ravens have won 20 straight preseason games. Actually, now 21 because they just won their first one this week. By or sell, they will continue that streak with their final two games at Arizona and against the Washington Commander. I will sell that, okay, because I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to buy it. Why not? I, I think the Ravens' death ball that they have right now, it, it definitely, well, they prepare themselves well. Washington, they have a lot of things to go in Arizona. Who cares? Not... They didn't make the playoffs last year. Get into the playoffs. Uh, injuries kept a lot of that from happening. Mm. They no three running backs. They had no three top corners out, too, which I think hurt them even more. So I'm actually going to buy that one. I think they, they continued that one. All right, buy or sell. The Padres will surpass the Braves and the Mets and finish with the second best record in the National League. I'm going to sell it. I, I don't think they will. This whole Tatis thing is going to definitely shadow them and affect them moving forward this season. They'll make the playoffs, but they're not going to pass the Mets. They're not going to pass the Braves, so I'm going to sell it. Originally, I was going to buy this, but now with the Tatis suspension now, too, I'm going to definitely sell that at this point. The Mets are going to go cold at some point. They're not going to play as high as I, they I are agree with you. for long, but I, I think they'll surpass the Braves. I think the Braves, they strike out a lot. They're not situationally hitting the same way they were last year, but I don't think they surpass the Mets at this point now without Tatis, so I am going to sell it. All right, buy or sell. Donovan Mitchell will not be traded in the month of August. I'm going to buy it. I think that it's going to happen, but it will happen at the last minute. A lot of the experts that we had on the show have been saying that. They're going to wait, and they're going to try to get as much as they can and skim the Knicks as much as they can. I'm going to sell it. I think it'll be within the next two weeks. Danny Ainge will have to come down at some point. I can't see it lasting into September at this point. Danny Ainge just being too unrealistic. They can't expect seven first-round picks for a player. And I do think there could be another three-way trade option like we heard with the Lakers last week. So I am going to sell that. All right, buy or sell. The Buccaneers lost Ryan Jensen. They were top offensive lineman for the season. They will not be a top two seed in the NFC because of that. I'm going to sell that because Tom Brady likes to release the ball quicker. He knows his players. He knows the offense. They're going to run his offense, and I think that's going to benefit him. It doesn't matter who the offensive line is going to be. 
Tom Brady knows what he's doing, and Tom Brady has always been successful by doing it. And this guy's a veteran who's won how many Super Bowls? So let's be honest with each other. So I am going to sell that. I believe they'll be a top two team. I am going to buy it because only because they're scheduled, though, too. Because you got the factor in they have to play the NFC West. They also have to play the AFC North. And that's going to be very hard. And also, Tom Brady, yes, he does have a quick release. But they also lost two other interior offensive linemen, too. That's going to be a lot to adjust to. Alex Kappa went to the Bengals, and Ali Marpet retired, too. So it's not just Jensen. So I think there's a lot of factors to go in. I think they'll be still tough out in the playoffs. And again, Todd Bowles is also their coach, too. So who knows? So I'm actually going to buy that. I think they'll be number three. All right, buy or sell. Max Scherzer will finish with an ERA under two right now at 1.98. I'm going to sell that. I think he'll get into a spot where he's not going to be that dominant. I think there'll be a couple of weeks where he's not pitching as well as he is, but he's been fantastic. Everybody thought he was going to be fantastic when the Mets moved him, but I think they overpaid him, but that's just my opinion. But if they win a World Series, who cares? So I'm going to sell that. Yeah, I'm going to sell it too. I think it'll be hard for them to keep up that kind of pace this late in the season. I know the, the sample size with the starts, it's easier for them to go down if he has one more dominant start, but it's also the same way easier to go up too. And I also don't think he'll go as long as games all the time. They're going to try to limit his innings, which means the ERA will, will drastically change a lot faster. So I am going to sell it as well. Buy or sell, one hockey one. The Islanders will land in Nazem Kadri. I think it's probably going to happen. They're right now looking to trade J.P. Pajot. So once they got the trade for Pajot, because they were looking for an offensive winger, I think Kadri knows that the Islanders are interested in him. I know that he believes that the Islanders are going to give him the extension. So I'm going to buy it. I'm going to sell it. I actually think Detroit is going to overpay for him at this point. We've seen them be very active this offseason. They brought an ex-Ranger, Andrew Kopp, who I wanted the Rangers to keep. They also brought in David Perron. I think they realize these young players are getting it going. Now they're starting to spend and think they're a contending team. I think they're going to overpay slightly and end up getting him, stealing him from Colorado. So I'm actually going to sell that. All right, buy or sell. Kevin Durant will be traded to the 76ers. I'm going to sell it. It's not going to happen. There's no way Harden's going to let that happen. Why would he leave there and want to leave there if Kevin Durant was still there? It doesn't make sense. I'm going to sell it. He's not going to 76ers. Yeah, I'm going to sell it too. I I don't think Kevin Durant's getting traded at all at this point before the season starts. I think he'll end up getting traded at the trade deadline to one of those other teams with the rookie issue stipulations where either the Suns or the Heat will, will trade their guys. So I think at that point he'll end up getting traded. I am going to sell it. All right, buy or sell. The Orioles will finish the season ahead of the Red Sox. I'm going to buy it. I think the Red Sox stink, even though they beat the Yankees yesterday. I think they stink. They're one of the worst teams in the major leagues, and they're probably going to have a top draft pick the year after. So there you go. I'm going to buy it. I think they finish above the Red Sox. Yeah, I'm going to buy it, too. I don't trust the Orioles necessarily to hold on and make the playoffs. I think the Rays will end up fending them off at that point to steal that spot. But right now, they're currently four games up on the Red Sox. They have two games at hand, too. So I think they have enough leeway to finish that. The Red Sox have all those pitching injuries now, especially with Chris Sale with the motorcycle accident now, too, breaking his wrist. So I'm going to buy that as well. All right, last one. Zach Wilson will play in week one. I'm going to sell it. I think he'll miss the first week play the second week. He'll be out four weeks. I would predict more four weeks, and they'll miss the first week just to get acclimated with the offense and then be back in week number two. So I am going to sell that. I'm going to sell it too. I think what the diagnosis is going to be is probably something in between, and then it might take him a while to get back to, because like I said on the football segment, non-contact injuries sometimes have taken longer just as much as contact injuries for these leg injuries too. I think he'll end up missing a couple games, but I don't think he'll end up missing the whole season. It didn't look like an egregious one like you saw with the Dalvin Cook one and the Deshaun Watson one on those particular cuts that they made. I still think it was dumb on his part what he did, but definitely the first couple games I am going to sell. He does not play in week one.